Hello pianists, you just heard the Minuet in F major, written by Leopold Mozart. I know you recognize that last name, but the first name was actually the father of the famous Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And most historians believe that he might have written this piece to teach his son and daughter how to play the piano. So it's a great introductory classical piece for you to learn at the piano as well. So the title is A Minuet, which was a favored dance of Mozart's time period. And that's significant as Mozart would have been exposed to the dances around Europe as he traveled playing for the kings and queens. So a minuet is in 3-4. I'll talk you through a systematic approach of learning how to play this with correct articulations. I'll give you a neat trick of how to play that right hand melody louder than that left hand accompaniment pattern. I'll teach you how to play that ornament, how to make it sound sophisticated with nuances of dynamics versus an orchestral interlude. So we'll talk through some techniques. So stay tuned and we'll get started. On the rhythm category, I mentioned it's in 3-4, which is appropriate for a dance. I would even just tap along with me. I'm going to play measures 1 through 8 again. Something to pay attention to is the right hand will play while the left hand is lifting. So be precise on your rest. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, left lifts, left, left hold. So just practice tapping through that as I even played that beginning demo to get those rests in the left hand while the right hand continues to play. Also notice as I was pointing out, measure two and four have half notes in the left hand, whereas measure six and eventually 14 have a dotted half note. So make sure you hold that for three beats while the right hand is still playing. All right, let's move into the note reading and fingering category of our learning process. We look at our key signature, one flat confirms the minuet in F major per the title. I'm gonna get started on my left hand. It's on an F3 and it's a third. This piece uses one, four, one, five, seven, one progressions. So we're gonna go through the left hand and just play where the chords are changing so you can get used to those shifts in your hand. Starts with three and five. And then the next measure three, B flat and D, which is a four chord, measure five back to the one. And then I have this kind of scalar octave pattern where it's B flat, C down an octave, up a fourth, fifth, fourth into fifth there. I would practice that with some reduction practice at measure seven to eight. Block the octave and then block the octave to get used to thinking that as one thought. And then we go into measure nine. I'm on C number two and it stays there for that whole line. And then measure 13 goes up to that third again, and then that same pattern, octave, fourth, fifth, to the very end. So practice that left hand by itself until it's comfortable. Let's move to the right hand. I'm gonna start on this high F, and it goes down a fourth. So play along with me, or even just practice saying the intervals along. One, two, three, down a fourth, repeats. Down a third, up a fourth, third, third, down a fourth, Fingering substitution, one to three, up a third, steps down. So thankfully where the left hand becomes busier, the right hand is easier as a scale. Going into measure nine, notice this jumps up a ninth. I would suggest you reach up an octave and then it feels more like a second if your hand can't quite reach a ninth. Some of you, if you have larger hands, probably can feel that ninth up, but move your hand and extend it early. One, two, three, and then you're ready to go. Then we're on a G, down thirds. I would play that with some reduction practice. Thirds, thirds, C chord repeats itself. Thirds, thirds, chord. And then measure 13 is the same as five through eight. Finger substitution, one to three, third steps goes down. And you could do a process of playing the right hand and tapping the left hand. Lift, we lift where the phrases end. Hold the left hand, both staccato, right hand holds while the left hand is staccato. We're already getting ready to go into that articulation category, which we'll move into next. All right, now that we're in the articulation category, I'm going to start with a poor demo. I'm gonna ignore my slurs and my staccatos, which add so much spirit to this piece, and then we'll follow it up with adding those in.
you get the idea. So that does not sound like a spirited dance. So let's go through and we'll add that. I would suggest you use some vocabulary to remind you what to do with your hand. Think on the slurs that you would stay down into the keys and the staccatos are an up like the hops. Lift, smooth, up, up, stay smooth, lift, smooth, up, up, lift, up, up, up. And it's a very light type of playing from this time period. Major nine would both be up and then down, up, and then back like a repeat. Let's talk a little bit about the technique to get those articulations to come out. At the starts of your two note slurs, you're gonna let that wrist drop with some arm weight, a little bit even like a lower five finger is appropriate. And then that will let you be buoyant and come up, scoop under, up, scoop under as you go away from the body. Under, over, and here where it's supposed to be forte, like an orchestral interlude at this dance, you're gonna need to use some forearm rotation to get some arm strength to make it loud enough. Up, rotate right, left, right, left, under, up. Same thing, but a lighter motion. And then down, up, under, lift. So technique is critical to be able to play with those articulations, which leads us into the dynamics category. If you start to use that arm weight and that rotation, it lets you play naturally with expression. So the two note slurs tell us that we should play the first note louder and the second one lighter, and you're going to decrease through those little melodic motives. So you'll notice on the score, if you're practicing this from Alfred's Group Piano for Adults Book 1, page 160, I've added some additional dynamics to this. So let me play that through again with both hands. So I'm gonna drop a little heavier, decrease, warmer on the four chord, decrease less on the one. Here's our goal of the piece, the five, seven. I'm gonna go on forte, contrast it. your harmonies to guide you. The one chords could be softer and more peaceful, the four is a bit more rich, and then our goals are at the five, seven, the ends of those cadences, the most robust, the most arm weight to get that to come out. Another thing I should mention within dynamics is the voicing. What part would you sing along with? That would definitely be the right hand. Use your silent play technique where the left hand is just going to tap on top of the keys while the right hand plays to get the right hand voiced. That'd be a good kinesthetic test to see how comfortable your notes and fingerings are in the left hand. Last up into the style and mood as a summary. This is from the classical time period, so we should have those very buoyant types of staccatos, arm weight drops on the two note slurs. And I am going to add a little ornament at the end. It was up to the performer's taste at this time period to add decorations as they would like. So it looks like a trill symbol with a line through it. It means I decorate with the F and then the lower note. Use your three, two, three. is a dance so take a little time for that to come to a natural close. Enjoy learning the minuet in F major by Leopold Mozart.